Hello everyone, how you doing? Stomp our gamer here. I got a new setup. It's okay. I got a nice ultra wide monitor, monitor ultra wide monitor. So take a look at the video output. Let me know if you can see the full screen. If it looks good, if it doesn't, let me know. I got a new webcam that allows me to zoom, which would be great, except even when I zoom, my little green screen chair back doesn't cover enough of the screen for me to actually use a green screen and because of the ultra wide monitor I have to put the camera off to the side and it's a taller one so if I put the camera on top of my new monitor I'd be looking up to you guys like this so at least this way I can look at you directly and I have a secondary monitor up there which is where I'm looking at my Streamlabs program so it's a little complicated I'm gonna have to mess with it more but I wanted to try to get a video made for you guys. I've tried to make this video as a live stream. It hasn't worked. I've had stuff happening in the house interrupting my video. So I'm trying to record this and then I'll try to upload it. So maybe we'll get better quality. Uh, we'll see. I may even edit it. Probably not. I won't have time. But anyway, today we're going to review the Drake Vulture. So you can see we're looking at it here. Now this is from Drake and the Drake Vulture's main purpose is salvage. It's its only purpose. Um, it has some guns. Think of them as decoration. Uh, we're going to take a look at the ship today, and I'll give you some reasons why you would not want to use this ship in combat. So we're going to go ahead and open her up and take a look. So just from the vertical appearance, excuse me, the exterior appearance, you can see that you got two little engines here. They're smaller than a Cutlass Black's engines, but they're very similar. They almost look like the secondary engines off of the Herald. And then it's flying a ship that is larger than either the Cutlass or the Herald. So that gives you an idea of how she's going to perform. So we're going to come inside here and close the hatch so we don't end up with any random guests. So, as you come in here, you're going to notice you have a cargo grid right here. That'll fit 12 SCU of cargo. So you can basically fit one, so six, two stacks of six of cargo boxes. So 12 SCU. As you salvage, this little device here makes cargo boxes and spits them out. It spits them out one at a time. Then you got to come back here with a personal tractor beam, lift it up, move it onto the grid, and then expel the next one, lift it up, move it on the grid, rinse, repeat. So salvaging of the vulture takes patience and time because you're going to strip some hull, create a box, move a box, create a box, move a box, rinse, repeat. You can create your own um, using salvage here. You can create a multi-tool and a tractor beam attachment. I don't recommend this even though it's free. As you can see, the cost 0.89 SCU to make the multi-tool and to make the tractor beam attachment it's 0.2 so roughly 1.2 SCU of cargo of potential salvage profit to make a multi-tool that only costs a little bit so we're going to go ahead and head up here to the living quarters now you can if you're very inventive you can bring cargo up and stack boxes and make more than 12 SCU, and then you'll have to exit for the cockpit. Um, I don't recommend it, just do 12 and sell, it's easier. So you got a bed. Yay, you can bed log. You got a bathroom. Let's see if I can open it. I wasn't able to open it this last time. Here we go. Your typical toilet slash shower. And that's really it. You've got some your power, pan power plants, coolers, uh, some of your components gravity generator, battery. Not a lot you can access from the interior of the ship. And then cockpit. So initially, just taking a look at it, we can see we've got two joysticks and some MFDs. So we'll sit down and power her up. Now, another thing I've had to do lately is every time, it seems to me every time I want to play the game, I have to delete my user folder redo all my key bindings, and then I can log back in. It's a pain. So, looking down here, 
my Toby's not quite calibrated. But you can see your two joysticks, so uh, let's see. Roll is on the right stick as a twist. Pitch is the right stick. Yaw is the right stick. Thrust forward is the left stick forward. Thrust back, left stick back. Strafe up. Whoop. So strafe is on this stick as well. Let's go ahead and request launching here. And you'll see visibility wise, you can't look up. You got a roof on top of you. You can look left, limited, by about equivalent of 70 degrees a side. A little bit more on the left side because that's actually another exit. So less visibility on the right. And down. Pretty decent downward visibility, so that's good. Right, we should be good to go all the way up. We're launching from Everest Harbor, so we're going to do the space portion of the review first. Which makes sense. A lot of your salvage is in space. I have found some salvage planet side, especially around, like, bunkers and mission objectives and planetary bounty locations. Please visit again. So first things first, we're going to come to a full stop here. And we're going to take a look at our acceleration. So for acceleration, you're going to look bottom right. You see where it says G safe and then the G's. So here's straightforward acceleration. 6.9 G's. Yeah, 6.9, 6.8. Deceleration, same direction, use a boost. About 4 G's of deceleration. Come to another stop, we'll check acceleration and vertical. Alright, we're at zero. Here we go. Vertical acceleration. 2.8. Roughly 2.8, 2.7. I will turn on VTOL. Here we go up. 2.8. 2.7. So VTOL makes no noticeable change in vertical acceleration. Point us at the station and we'll check yaw and roll rates and pitch. A little jerky on the server today. Here's roll. Yaw. Yaw is very sluggish. Roll's decent. Yaw is sluggish. Pitch. Pitch is also sluggish. So we have very slow accelerations on most axes. Obviously, if you turn it at a 45, you're going to get better turning. So here we go. We'll, so literally, turn it at 45 degree. Now you get a better turn rate because you're using both your lateral and vertical thrusters to turn. But it's still not amazing. Let's check our top speed. So with that slow acceleration, if you're being attacked by a fighter, you're not going to outrun them. You're only getting 3.4 Gs of constant acceleration. You use boost, you've got it up to 6.8, but boost won't last long. So I'm still only 700 meters per second, giving a Gladius or something like that plenty of time to take me out and topping out just a little bit faster than a Constellation. So you will not be outrunning a pirate in the ship. If you're going to be salvaging somewhere dangerous, you're going to want an escort. But overall, I mean, she handles well. If you get jumped by a pirate, and let's say they're in a Constellation Delta, since you can't run, excuse me, a Mustang Delta, since you can't run, and if it's an NPC, an NPC is not going to say, hey, drop your cargo, and I'll let you live. Um, if it's a player, I would highly recommend offering to give them some credits to save your life and let you live. Um, but if it's an NPC, you might want to try to fight. It's not going to go great, but it's worth a shot. We'll head over to Lorville. And we'll do some atmospheric testing. Quantum drive is now 
All right, here we are in atmosphere. We'll head out this way. What ship is that? Hmm. We'll head this away. So in Atmo, about the same acceleration. Acceleration, i.e. slow. Turning at a 45, not bad. Not great, but not bad. And still the same accelerations. So she handles almost the same. Okay, the vertical is much slower in Atmo, which makes sense because we've got gravity. We'll turn the VTOL on, see if we get back to that two point something. All right, so in Atmo, you do want to use VTOL because you do lose your vertical, you know, taking off, strafing up acceleration. But overall, she handles the same in Atmo as she does in the outside of Atmo. So not bad, decent handling. The cockpit layout makes sense. You've got two MFGs down here. You've got two MFDs and radar up there. You've got your warning panel up there, very visible from the cockpit. When you go into mining mode, that all makes sense as well. It's very visible, well laid out. Overall, I'm very happy with the ship. I've done quite a bit of salvage with it and made a lot of money. So I would highly recommend the Vulture for making money. That is her purpose. Prospector Vulture. I mean, there's not much else to say. If you need a ship to print your money for you, to help support your gaming habit, to purchase new weapons for other ships, shields, components, you can't go, go wrong with a Prospector or a Vulture. So 10 out of 10 from Stompar for the Vulture's effectiveness and use. I'd say an 8 out of 10 for the cockpit layout. And as far as would this ship fly in real life, we all know the answer to that is no. Um, in a sci-fi world, do I think the layout of it makes sense? Yes. Um, the thrusters are well placed. Uh, I think that it, you know, in the Star Citizen world, this is a well-designed, very functional ship and well worth the money. I don't think it's overpriced. Uh, do I think a reclaimer would be better for salvage? Sure, if you have a crew to run with. Um, but if it's just you and some friends, Heck, you and one other friend in the Vulture would be very efficient. One person salvaging from up front in the cockpit, one moving boxes in the back. Uh, you get that kind of loadout, you can make a lot of serious money quick. Uh, it's not uncommon to make 300,000 credits in 20 to 30 minutes, which is significantly more than you can with a Prospector. Um, just because with a Prospector, you have to wait to refine. Here, you're just selling. So really, that is it for today. I'm going to see how this video came out once I stop recording. Hopefully I will be able to get this uploaded to YouTube and uh, available to all of you all. I'm sorry I haven't been making a lot of videos, been busy with life. Hopefully as uh, things settle down here with the new job and I get a more steady schedule, and hopefully Dot 2 comes out and servers get a little bit more stable, I will have more time to create content for you guys. And T to sign landing bay. I'll probably redo some of my videos. Landing gear down. All right, we'll go ahead and land the ship. Warning, you are leaving a safe zone. Warning, you are leaving a safe zone. How am I leaving a safe zone? I'm on my way to a landing pad. One thing I do find landing this planet side, she doesn't quite, it's very hard to judge your distance because of those long kind of juts there. So if you're like me and you don't want to use vertical camera, you might have a little bit of a hard time judging yourself in your landing pad, landing places like Lorville. Obviously an exterior pad, not as big of a deal, because exterior pad gives you plenty of space. Let's see if we're able to repair and refuel today.
good server. I wish I had more time to play. Alright guys, again, eventually there'll be some green screen here with something like an Idris bridge or something. As soon as I figure out how to mount the camera more centralized. Having a tough time. Uh, I do like my new setup. I um, wonder if I have enough cord to show you guys. We'll see. So I've got... Whoa, ultra wide monitor and then the regular monitor up here and then of course my controls but that's it for today i hope you guys have a wonderful day take care enjoy the game and again remember there is a wipe coming with 3.182 so don't get too attached to anything you're purchasing in game right now and now my camera won't stay where it is ah yeah this was a bad idea. This is not going to work for the future. Bye, guys.